No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by Limelight, makers of professional lighting for independent filmmakers. My Road Reel International Film Contest. Enter at myroadreel.com. This is Joe. I'm here with Dennis over at the Sony booth, and Dennis is going to show us a little bit of the, some of the new announcements, which includes a, a new B4 adapter for the F55 and F5. Yes, that's right. What we have here, Joe, is a F5 with a B4 S16 PL adapter, and it comes in a couple of different parts. This was all put together. This came into uh, uh, the U.S. last week, and I was up at... Uh, Sony in New Jersey, and they actually just took it out of a box, handed it to me, and said, go and work with it. So what we're doing here is we're, we're figuring out a way to adapt a B4 lens into the PL mount. Okay, what we have here is an optical uh, converter from PL to B4. Uh, the magnification is a single element. The magnification on the lens would be 1.3. So your, let's say your Canon uh, 4.3 wide-angle B4 lens turns into a 5.5, Fujinon 4.5 turns into a uh, uh, 5.9. And then behind that, can I hand you this? All right. And behind that, and this is the new thing, and this is available now. It's, in the, it's on the product line in the Sony thing. This is a, the regular FZ to PL mount with a 12-pin Hiroshi uh, power supply and communication port for B4 lenses, and not just B4 lenses, but any of the Airy or Cook Zoom combinations that come out there. And we'll just put this back together and I'll show you what it does. The, one of the beautiful things about this combination is that it, it uses the 4K sensor and it takes a center crop out of the 4K sensor. So for me, uh, I had a, a chance to use it at a Miami Heat game last week and I was able to shoot under the basket uh, LeBron James and company uh, at high frame rates. So we were shooting 120 frames and we were using a, like I said, a Canon 4.3. Come on, baby. Oh, wow. Come on. There we go. Okay. And then I'll boot this back up and give you a little demo of what and how it's doing it. Give it a second here. So when you're shooting high uh, frame rate, when you're going down to 2K high frame rate, there were, in some cases, there are issues with aliasing or... or, or Moray. Moray, thank you. And they, Sony is offering a 2K OLP filter to put in front of the sensor. That sort of straightens it out. But in this instance, in a B4 area, you're actually able to stay out of the 2K down, the 4K downsampling to 2K or the pixel binning. So what, what they're doing now is the full sensor is being utilized in the sense that it's active, but we're only taking a center crop. So we're not we're not taking something from a down sample. Right. Okay. So right. So you're actually you're actually cropping into the sensor instead of bringing it down. Yeah, we're cropping into the sensor, and in the camera menu, at the very bottom of the list, is a lens. Excuse me, past it, lens interface function. And if you see right here, you look up in this monitor, it might be easier, or either one. We have Type C, and we have Type C Cook, and we have Type A Airy, and then underneath there's Type Cook plus 12, and Type A plus 12, and that's basically a Cook plus 12 pin, which is the same protocol. It really, I don't know why they call it Cook, but it's basically a B4 protocol to for Fujinon or any B4 lens has the same protocol to control the lens. So when I activate that. I end up with complete control of this of this lens. I have servo, obviously, and I have start and stop as well. And the manner in which it gets there, I can demo that in the systems menu. Let me go back. So in the systems menu, down at the bottom here, we go into our base setting. And in our base setting, I go to image scan mode. And you see that I'm presently at 2K center. I am grabbing the okay. center of the 4K image. But when I activate the normal scan or the normal scanning, you will see, hold on a second. I didn't, I have to uh, enter that as well. When I go to normal, I have to execute that. I, I over jumped it. Execute, and then we hit menu, and you can see right. how we're getting around that. 
So then the, the glass is giving you the full coverage to the this full Super 16 uh, crop. So your field of view is the same. So, but you take you take you add the magnification. So the the 5.5 that I ended up with, that is, you're going to get the field of view of a 5.5 millimeter and a B4 lens. Right. So what this is is really good news for all the guys that have B4 lenses that have been sitting around or making changes. They can take these out and and add them to their system. And I would suggest that they be HD B4 lenses and that they be uh, new B4 lenses and select glass right. because uh, some some poorer samples I pulled up some older lenses I threw on there and I ended up just finding a, a lens that worked right so uh, it really is you know glasses you need to t check your glass out. Right. Okay so we're going to talk about the uh, ProRes and DNX HD upgrades and also the F5 to F55 upgrade. Yes so uh, from the beginning We've tried to make the F5 and 55 cameras um, have a very long, useful life, and we can, uh, keep adding functionality to the cameras and adding value. So instead of introducing two new cameras, this NAB, we introduced two new cameras, or which are the F5 and 55, with now right. untold uh, amounts of new uh, capabilities. Right. And uh, one of them is that we're adding commonly used codecs. We still see the XABC as a main codec and we want to make this a de facto standard codec in the industry. Um, but we also recognize there are many customers that need to record in ProRes and, and deliver in those, in, in those uh, codecs. So we're adding a hardware option to the camera that will be available as an optional hardware upgrade to the cameras that will then enable ProRes and the NX. Do you have pricing on that just yet? No, no, there's no pricing on it, and there's no definite timing yet, uh, but there's something that will come in, in the near future. Okay. And also you have the F5 to F55 upgrade, so for people who have an F5, they can actually upgrade that now to the F55. This is also part of the same concept of uh, keeping adding value to the cameras. If somebody buys an F5 for vegetarian reasons, and later they see that they would like to use an F55, uh, we want to offer the opportunity to, to them to upgrade their camera to be a F55. And the upgrade uh, adds the image sensor with a global shutter, uh, the, all the hardware changes to the camera and the software. The camera becomes an F55 completely. Uh, Functionality-wise and performance-wise will be all exactly the same. The only thing that does not change it's a serial number badge. Okay. So the serial number badge has to remain by law the same. And uh, that will save A5 on it, F5 on it. But there will be a means of identifying it as an F55. Okay. And pricing on that yet? Um, we don't have a definite pricing to announce, but the price, you can imagine that the, the price of the F5 plus the upgrade right. will, will be similar to buying an F55 outright. Okay. That's great. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for yeah. Okay, so also there's an upgrade coming for the FS700 if you want to talk about that. Sure. This is very exciting because Sony is uh, creating many very uh, nice E-mount zoom lenses. These are professional zoom lenses. Initially, we came up with the many uh, inexpensive lenses, but these are now optically very beautiful. Parfocal. They will hold focal over the zoom range, constant aperture, some of the very fast f2.8, some are constant f4, wonderful. And uh, for those lenses to be compatible with the FS700, we need to make a firmware update to the camera so that there's no geometric distortion. Currently, the lens will be controlled by the camera, but will, there'll be geometric distortion at the end of the, of the zoom range. And by adding this firmware, then it will be the image where we correct it. And we also do shading correction. So yeah, this is going to be very useful for FS700 users. It's going to be a free upgrade to the FS700? Exactly. So our goal is to offer a user downloadable upgrade that they can implement to the FS700 themselves. Do you know when this might be released, any time frame? It will be within this year, later into the fall, maybe, hopefully, if everything goes well. Okay. Great, thanks. Thank you.